Hello and welcome to the presentation Coding Additives Support Your Floor Coatings. My name is Oliver Peters and I'm working for the business line Coding Additives of Evonik. I'm responsible for architectural and floor coatings. As the title already says, the focus of this presentation will be floor coatings and our solutions for this market. As we all know, the floor coatings market can be divided because of different requirements due to the end application. For example, industrial coatings. Here we have typical examples as, for example, the protective and functional um, applications for warehouses, factories, and they have especially requirements to have high resistance against chemicals or cleaning solutions. Beside that, they, have a, they need to have a high durability against high wear, traffic and impact. And in some cases, for example, for special end applications, ESD coatings. Beside that, for example, commercial applications, here we see a more decorative part because it's maybe for retail, business or office spaces, where you need to have a good resistance against cleaning and disinfection, but also still a good durability for wear and traffic. And for example, car parks. Here we have um, um, higher resistance or need higher resistance against chemicals and exposure, for example, UV. In today's presentation, I would like to cover three points. Properties of the final application. This can be deforming or derating issues or leveling problems, but it can also be coloristic effects, like for example, pigment flotation. The second point is process optimization. Here we are talking on the one hand about the right dispersing agent to get the proper stability and color development, and on the other hand, about formulations which are meant to enable a fast return to service after application, like for example, polyaspartic coatings. My last point will be sensitive end applications. In this case, we are talking about anti-static floor coatings or ESD coatings for special purposes. I would like to begin with theorating and compatibility issues. A good example of this are epoxy clear coats, especially with increasing film thickness. Our recommendation for this kind of application is Tego RX 922. This is a 100% deformer concentrate based on derating polymers. And due to the fact that RX 922 is free of any silicon, it provides a very, very good compatibility. This you can see, for example, in this picture on the left side. Here we incorporated the deorators into the hardener, uh, the, the resin of an epoxy clear coat. We added the hardener and poured the system into a lid of metal, um, metal cans. And here you see a um, comparison of Tego RX 922 to a conventional deorator. But beside the compatibility, the RX922 also provides a very, very strong deorating effect. Here we have a uh, comparison of three different deorators. The, the gray column shows the deorating efficiency, so higher value means better deoration, and the deep purple one shows the clarity or compatibility. So, as I already said, the Tego RX922 is our highlight for especially clear coats if it's epoxy or polyurethane. The next slide shows the performance of the right surface control additive. Therefore, I would like to draw your attention to the left side, uh, the left picture on this chart. Here we have a blank sample of insolvent free epoxy floor coating. It's pigmented and without any deformer or deorator. As you see, we have a lot of microfoam and pinhole problems. When you choose a deorator, as you know, deorators have to be in some kind incompatible to improve the deoration. 
So these deorators can cause film problems like leveling problems or craters due to the incompatibility. So sometimes the right deorator is not um, the most compatible one. But therefore, we offer surface control additives like our Tego Glide 450, which is a recodable slip and flow agent with 100% active matter. And this provides a better leveling of the final film, which then shows these mirror like finish of a coating. This chart compares two different dispersing agents with a focus on color strength. To compare dispersing agents, we add them to the direct grind and pour a part of the formulation after we added the hardener into a lid of metal cans. In comparison, we also added three different kinds of pigments. We used an iron oxide red, organic blue, and a carbon black to cover three different chemistries of pigments. By adding these and pouring it into the lid of a metal can, you can see the difference in color strengths. Without any dispersant, we have quite a good color strength. It's nothing fancy, but it's good. A standard dispersant doesn't really improve this behavior, but our Tigo Disperse 1010 has an extremely high effect on the color strength in epoxy clear coats. It's a high molecular weight polymer, and it's been developed for low polarity solvents, but we figured out that it works very, very well in epoxy floor coatings to improve the color strength for really rich and strong colors. Another topic for dispersing agents is the uniformity and stability of a color. Solutions for this will be shown on the next two slides. Here we have an example of a two-pack polyurethane system. On the left side, you see the formulation without a dispersion. And what we usually do is we pour the formulation onto a, a Hostafan foil, so a, a clear foil. And after some, some time, we come through a part of the formulation to see on the one hand the long-term effectiveness of the deorator, but on the other hand, also the tendency to um, pigment floating or streaks by, by floating titanium dioxide, for example. And here you see without a dispersion, you have an inadequate stabilization of these mixed pigmented systems so that a lot of the green pigment floats to the surface because of a lower density. At the beginning, it looks like a higher color strength, but when you come through the material, you see that there's just the pigment on the surface and you have a very poor stabilization. By using Tigo Dispers 670, which is a solution of the high molecular weight polymer, you can adjust the stability so that you have a very nice leveling due to the Newtonian flow behavior of the 670, but on the other hand, a very good stability of mixed pigmented systems. In comparison to the previous slide, this slide shows pigment floating of the titanium dioxide due to the application method. We see here a solvent-free epoxy base coat, and when you think about an applicator who's coating an entire hall floor. You have a big hall, and usually he starts to um, produce one part of the coating. He applies it onto the floor, and then he has to produce a second batch to apply it. And then the old and the new material meet each other at some part of the floor because, um, yeah, because of the, the reaction the old part has already a higher viscosity and the, the new part is lower in viscosity. And when the applicator applies it, the old and the new part get mixed. And this is what we also test by coming through our material. So after some reaction time, we come through the part 
which is already reacted. And we see here that if you have a bad stabilization of the mixed pigmented system, the titanium dioxide goes to the surface after combing through your material. And this shows a bad stabilization of your pigments. Whereas the Tigo Disperse 652 provides a really good um, compatibilization, especially by using inorganic pigments together with fillers and carbon blacks. And beside the improvement of the pigment floating, the 652 gives also a pseudoplastic behavior during storage, which improves the stabilization of um, your system over time. Now I would like to draw your attention to the topic fast return to service with a special focus on polyaspartic coatings. We all know that polyaspartic coatings um, have a very fast curing system, so it requires a very strong and rapid deaerator. It's not that easy to deaerate uh, polyaspartics in comparison to solvent-free or solvent-borne um, epoxy coatings, for example. Here you see how we compare deaerators in a um, solvent-free polyaspartic clear coat. It has been applied by a roller. And so the gray column shows um, the deaeration. Higher value means better deaeration. And the deep purple one shows the compatibility. Here you see that the RX944, which is um, organic polymers used um, for the deaeration with a tip of silicon, gives a very strong deaeration, but the, the compatibility isn't the best. Like I said some slides before, good deaerators sometimes tend to be incompatible due to the mechanism of um, deaeration. But there again, we have surface control or substrate wetting additives like our Tigo Wet 250, which can be used to improve um, the deaerating effect or the compatibility. So sometimes they boost the effectiveness of our deaerators, but sometimes they, you can use them to just improve the compatibility. And here, um, like a very good winning team is the Tegu RX 944 and WET 250 in polyaspartic clear coats works really, really well because you have a very good deaerating effect in combination with a very strong compatibility. Let's summarize briefly what we have looked at. We had at the beginning foam control. So I showed you some of our Tigo RX deaerators, but be beside that, we have also Foamex deformers in our portfolio to prevent foam formation during um, the processing, for example, but also during the application of your floor coating systems. We also had a look at our Tigo Disperse dispersing agents. We also have Zetasperse dispersants in our portfolio, and you will see later in our selector guides, how we recommend them for different systems. And the third point, the um, defect-free surfaces, which can be provided by our Tigo wet, dynol, sulfinyl types. And we also have Tigo glide and flow surface control additives in our portfolio, which improve the leveling and the compatibility of your floor coatings. Now we are looking at sensitive coatings. And as I said earlier, we will focus on anti-static coatings. Therefore, I would like to draw your attention to the two graphs on this slide. What you see is a comparison of carbon fibers and our product added to 30 at insolvent-free epoxy coating. We measured on the one hand the bleeder resistance, which means the resistance of the coating itself in comparison also the system resistance, which means um, a combination of the person standing on the floor, the shoe that the person is wearing and the floor coating itself. So here all three parts of the system have to be um, 
yeah, conductive to really fulfill the industry norm. And here you see that 8% added to 30 already used to very low values in resistance. And this is measured in two different humidities. So especially at lower humidities, usually the system resistance and the bleeder resistance can increase due to the lower humidity in the air. Our added to 30 is a formulation of solid salts and quaternary nitrogen compounds developed to increase the conductivity in waterborne, solvent-borne and solvent-free formulations without influencing the decorative effect. Because that's the second uh, point for the added to 30. In comparison to carbon fibers, the added to 30 doesn't have any influence on the color of your coating. Carbon fibers, as you know, always influence your coating by um, the, the color. You will always see them, but they also have a high influence on your viscosity. So using carbon fibers increases the viscosity. And carbon fibers can lead to conductivity gaps because they are not always well distributed in your system so that they lead to a lower conductivity at some spots. This is something that won't happen with the added 230. I would like to move on to the last part of my presentation, our technical product selector guides. Here you see a screenshot of our new tools to give you a better understanding of our solutions for the flooring market. These selector guides are separated or um, yeah, separated by system. We have 100% solids, waterborne, solvent-borne systems, and then by effects. So from wetting and dispersing to grind aids and compatibilizers, we have different effects for this kind of application. And you see here our actual or, or newest um, portfolio, how we recommend our products for these effects. But if you want to have updated news, you can look at coatingeditors, Dot com under markets and flooring, you will find always the newest version of our selector guides. That brings me to the end of my presentation. If you have any questions or topics, please get in contact with me or, or our regional contact partners. On this slide, you find your contact partner. If you have any, uh, any request or um, questions for solutions and products for flow floor coatings, get in contact with your right contact partner. Thank you for your attention.